hello guys welcome back today we will understand as you can see in the board um, the differences between the correspondent banks and the interventory banks we will understand uh, what exactly is correspondent bank when will we use it and what is intermediary banks and uh, the differences between it so let's get with the definition of it uh, right so correspondent banks are are the banks basically which provides the services on behalf of the issuer bank or the center bank so they can the, the services can be uh, uh, in terms of banking it will be uh, providing the messages to another bank or pro providing the transactions to uh, the other bank you know same way intermediary banks also does the same thing it provides the services on behalf of the center bank it can be transactions or, the, or providing some messages or the documents on behalf of them the only main difference between the correspondent banks in the, and the intermediary banks is that the correspondent banks are responsible for the transactions in the multiple currencies. You know, uh, it can it can be the banks uh, can uh, perform uh, the transaction in a different current country and a different currency. So those kind of banks are called as uh, correspondent banks. So for example, let's say uh, a popular example, uh, SBI. India, right? SBI India wants to transfer a fund to another uh, to another country. Uh, so uh, that country is let's say UAE, United Arab, Arab Emirates, UAE, right? So in that case, SBI India, what it will do is, uh, since it doesn't have the, any accounting relationship or any kind of relationship, whether it be the RMA relationship as well, where they can exchange the information uh, uh, that is a message, swift message, MT103. So in that case, they will assign one correspondent bank, right, who has uh, this uh, uh, accounting relationship with the UAE. And uh, let's say uh, this is nothing but the standard charter bank. US right so since they do not have any uh, relationship just give me a second guys yes okay better now yeah I'm just I was just uh, checking out on the video so that it is coming properly or not so this example right scenario uh, uh, where uh, SBI India wants to transfer a fund to uh, UAE and let's say this is uh, Barclays, UA, Barclays UAE this is in UAE this is in India and this is again in USA right so they will select one currency uh, one correspondent bank right who can make transaction on behalf of them so SEB US they will select it and they will uh, make transaction on behalf of them. Let's say this is MT202 and this is MT202 bank to bank transfer, right? They are using this SCB US as a correspondent bank. Now let's suppose uh, SBA India wants to transfer a fund to Uh, let's say another bank again which is in let's say uh, uh, Oman right so now SBI India doesn't have a counting relationship or any other relationship uh, in Oman uh, so in that case they will uh, select one bank who has account or relationship so in this case also let's say SCB US has that relationship in Oman and uh, here they have city city Oman bank right now SCB US has a relationship in Oman and uh, it has a relationship with the city Oman bank so again SBI India since it has a relationship with SCB US it will again act as a correspondent bank so here you can see the difference right the SCB US bank is our correspondent bank in both the cases 
or it can have it can be in a multiple so other cases where the center bank doesn't have any other banks as a correspondent correspondent bank or the intermediary banks in uh, in the receiver country right so in that case a bank which is available in another bank and they have the relationship they can act as a correspondent bank and that bank uh, must have relationship with the receiver banks in the receiver country so in this case the correspondent bank has a relationship with the Barclays UAE and this standard bank uh, also has a relationship with this uh, receiver country in Oman so this bank has uh, uh, ability to make transaction in multiple currencies one is in uh, AED and this is uh, Oman Real OMR same way it can have multiple you know other relationship and, and that is why this bank is called as correspondent bank and yeah this is all about the correspondent bank right but uh, intermediary banks right so intermediary banks uh, it does uh, uh, act as in as a bank uh, middleman middle is in the bank uh, for only one currency you know so let's say uh, SBI India wants to transfer fund to uh, uh, Barclays US right so let's say this is Barclays US so here we can assign a bank which is city us as our intermediary bank right which will make payment locally in usd right to the barclays us bank so this way we can consider this as a city us bank and um, you know uh, and, and and if uh, SBI India wants to make a payment to let's say uh, City Oman, then City US might not have a relationship with oh, sorry, uh, let's say uh, Barclays Oman, then City US might not have the relationship. So in that case, we would not go for uh, City US as 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 an intermediary bank. In that case, we will go for another bank which has correspondent. Uh, which is called as correspondent banks which will have uh, account maintenance in the re uh, receiver bank in, in their currency so this is all uh, uh, about intermediary and correspondent bank uh, only main difference always try to remember that uh, correspondent bank will have facility to provide uh, the transactions in multiple currencies right and whereas uh, correspondent uh, sorry whereas uh, intermediary banks will just perform uh, the services that is a transaction services uh, for only one currency thank you for watching the videos